I'm Britt from Slanus Finds and welcome to my video. My camera is on 14%, but we're gonna we're gonna go for this. We're gonna hope that I can record this segment without it dying. Uh, today is Tuesday, March 16th. It is about 12.30 p.m. and I am beginning another vlog. I will be reading Silver Sparrow by Tiari Jones in this vlog. I am currently on page 38, so I haven't gotten very far, but so far I can tell you that it is about... It's like first person narrated from Dana's perspective and she is the illegitimate child of a man named James Witherspoon. Essentially he's a bigamist. He has kind of two families. One of them is secret and the other um, is public and the secret family knows about you know the wife and the other daughter but the wife and the daughter do not know about the secret family. We'll see what happens with all of that. Um, so far I am interested in it and I am liking it. I already read An American Marriage by Tiari Jones last March. It's not like the most gripping introduction so I'm not like dying to get back into it but I am interested to see where it takes me. Um, hopefully it kind of picks up a little bit because it's just like so far it's just Dana kind of describing her childhood what that was like, how it felt to kind of be a secret. Oh kittens get along now. My friend Dee commented on my last vlog and was asking about my earring collection so I decided that I would show it off in this vlog segment um, just to kind of have like something fun to show you and to talk about. I love buying like homemade jewelry so I'm always buying earrings on Etsy or through Twitter. I am going to show them off to you now. These sunflower earrings that are crocheted I got these from an Etsy shop called Rocky Mountain Hooked and these are probably my favorite earrings. You can you can tell why. You know why if you know me. Um, and I also got this like head bandana from that shop as well. So she uh, she's just like crocheting. It's really cute. I love it. Um, yeah, so the sunflower earrings are my fave. Also got what you saw in a recent vlog, these diamond shaped crystal quartz type earrings. I got these from a girl on Twitter. Her name is Alexa, I think, and her shop is called Luna Girl Jewelry, I believe. But I love these earrings so much. I think they're so elegant. Okay, my friend Sam bought me these lotus earrings uh, when I was with her. We were shopping downtown in the city I live in and I love these too because I love lotuses. Lodi? Lotus eye? <laughs> um, I love lotuses. I have a lotus tattoo so these earrings are simple, cute kittens. The cats think that if I start talking they can start playing. So these earrings Bryant got me. I don't know whose Etsy shop or whose Twitter account he got them from, so I will try to see if he can remember them and I'll put them in the description along with all the other artists. But uh, yeah, these were both gifts from Bryant last October, so that was really sweet of him. More recently, my friend Kelly bought these for me for Christmas and she got these at a shop in our city as well. I think it was like a locally owned uh, jewelry shop. Where I got these. I think I got these off of somebody on Twitter, but I bought them because I really liked the sun on them and I didn't just get the earrings. I got like a choker, a bracelet, and the matching earrings, but I don't wear these earrings a lot because they have a tendency to like fall down. I just think they're kind of like an odd shape, so I mostly wear the choker necklace um, more than anything from the set, but I, I figured if I wanted one piece of jewelry. I might as well get all the matching pieces. These are from Lexi's Little Creations. She is an absolute sweetheart. I love her. I love her wire wrapping. I also got the this like eye necklace to match the blue earrings. Um, I had bought this necklace for like a- stop. You need to stop. stop. Bought this necklace for a witchy Halloween costume I was uh, wearing for couple years ago. The thing with buying like homemade jewelry is that sometimes like 
whatever metal or earring uh, material they use, it will like irritate my ears because I have very sensitive ears, but I will wear them anyway because if I think it's pretty, I will deal with a little bit of ear irritation for the sake of wearing a beautiful earring and for looking good. <laughs> and then most recently I have bought these gold earrings from Ana Luisa and the earrings that I'm currently wearing are also from Ana Luisa and I bought these earrings because they match the necklace I got from the brand so I really I just found Ana Luisa really recently through Elias and Noelle's channels so I'm loving their jewelry it's like mostly gold very elegant and refined so I'm excited to wear these for my interview tomorrow because I have a second interview for the job I'm applying for, hopefully the last interview. So today I'm going to be prepping for that interview. I'm working on my grad school application. So very busy day. J Julia is sitting in my pile of earrings. She wants to play with my pile of earrings. So I'm gonna go now. <laughs> so see you in the next clip, bye. Today is Wednesday, March 17th. It is about 5 p.m. I have not read any more in Silver Sparrow than I last updated you, but I did have an interview this morning for a job. Um, it's like a call center job at an insurance company, so it's not like necessarily my dream job or anything, but I'm still hoping to get the job because um, money. I have the windows open because it's beautiful out. So I had an interview this morning, then I worked on um, a few things in the afternoon, and then I went on a walk with Bryant and my brother and my brother's girlfriend, which was really nice. Uh, it was a long, brisk walk and got kind of sweaty, but honestly, I'll take it because winter is ending. I think, I think in a couple days, it'll be officially the beginning of spring. So I'm excited for that, but Right now I am super tired after um, the social energy, the physical energy, the interview. Um, yeah, I am, I am very exhausted. But the work's not over yet. I'm applying to grad school, so I am working on my essay right now, my application essay. Um, I have to cover a range of different topics in this essay, and uh, I'm about halfway through my rough draft of it, so um, hopefully I am able to wrap it up quite quickly this week. But yeah, I kind of mentioned this for the first time in my last vlog, but I am applying to uh, a master's program for library and information sciences. I want to be a librarian so bad. That's the goal. Hopefully I'll be accepted. I'll do the two-year program, get my MLIS, and hopefully work at a library for like real money, like, like a salary. When I was a teenager, I had a part-time job at a library for two years and I was just a shelver, but I loved that job so much. Um, and I miss it and I wanna work there again. So, well, not at that library specifically, but a library. I, I don't know if I'll read more today. Hopefully I will, but I am working on a lot of things. So it's quite inconvenient of me to have started this vlog this week, but I'm gonna shoot to get to page 75 today. Um, that would only be a 45 page increase from what I have started, but um, I wanna make a little bit of progress at least. I find that if I take too long to read a book, I am more likely to not finish the book or not like it as much or be as invested in it. So usually I only try to read if I have like a large amount of time available 
for whatever reason, that's just like my method of reading, is to like really delve into the book when I'm able to, rather than just kind of pick it up here and there, which is so far what I'm doing with Silver Sparrow, and um, I need to kind of remedy that, but we'll see, we'll see what I do, and uh, I will see you in the next vlog update. Today is Thursday, March 18th. It is about 3 p.m. and I'm snacking on a cranberry orange muffin, which Bryant made this morning. They are perfectly moist, cooked to just the right temperature and consistency. And today is raining a lot. It's really bringing me down. I'm feeling kind of stressed out. I'm editing this um, My Adolescent Reading Habits video that I recorded the other day. Um, I mentioned like 50 books in it in passing, That's, I don't know, maybe it was more like 25, I'm not really sure. But now I'm going through and adding all the book cover images in the video while I talk about it and that is incredibly tedious and very annoying. Just kind of want to get it done with, post it. I got to page 78 in Silver Sparrow last night so I reached my reading goal for yesterday but um, I don't think I better read it anymore today because I am very busy. I'm working on my blog post for tomorrow morning, which is a bunch of haikus. I just, I really just want to be a puddle today. <laughs> like I just want to lay down on the floor and do nothing. But I have to keep up the momentum. I've been doing so much this week in terms of writing and working on projects that I just need to keep up the momentum. Brian had an interview this morning. Uh, or this afternoon for the same job that I'm applying for. Um, there's multiple positions for it, so it's not like we're competing against each other. I also booked a sheltered picnic area for Brian's birthday in May. He's gonna be 30! So I want to make it very special, and I wanted it to be somewhere where we could invite a lot of people to, like family and friends, but that it would be outside still, so um, I booked like a pavilion area for it. Um, his birthday is the same weekend as Mother's Day weekend, so I wanted to get a head start on it. But yeah, and then I'm also working on my grad school application essay, which I really don't want to, but I want to, so it's like, I don't want to write this, but I want to apply, so I have to write this, so I just have to do it. I don't know, not much of an update. Um, I'm about to make myself some real lunch, other than this muffin, so I'll see you in a future vlog update. Hello, it is about 10pm. I am enjoying a drumstick. Banana split flavored, limited edition, I dig it, it's very interesting. Sorry I've had food in every clip I've taken today. Um, yeah, I didn't accomplish everything I wanted to do today, but I'm at my mental capacity, so I'm calling it a day. I did most of the things I wanted to do today though, so overall it's a win. Um, but just did some yoga, where attention goes, energy flows. That's my girl Adrian. so true. And Brian's watching the Snyder Cut of the Justice League right now. I started watching it with him like a few hours ago and I got bored with it so it was just like a lot of slow-mo. I just, I can't hang for a four hour movie. I'm not in the place right now to get into that movie. But he's watching that for the next hour I think. <laughs> so I'm going to get back into Silver Sparrow after all. Just kind of see how far I can get tonight. I don't know. Maybe I'll be able to get to page 115. I don't know. We'll see. But. 
I guess what I'm gonna be doing. See you. Today is Friday, March 19th. It is almost 1 p.m. and I've reached the halfway point in Silver Sparrow, so I'm finally ready to actually discuss it with you. Um, so this book takes place in 1980s in Atlanta and it starts off in first person from the perspective of Dana, who is the illegitimate child of James Witherspoon, her father. And I thought that it was going to be like her meeting her father's legitimate daughter but um it's less so about them meeting in her section and more just kind of about like getting to know her what her life is like and i just reached the second part of the book which is from the perspective of the legitimate daughter or uh what's her name <laughs> la um, charisse oh my god i don't know what word to use other than legitimate and illegitimate although even in the book they mention how that's like not the best term for their situation but um take take my phrasing with a grain of salt is what i'm saying so so far i'm really interested in these characters i really am invested in their story and i'm kind of like not sure what the story is leading to. Like that's kind of how I felt in the first part. I'm just like, alright, what is this getting at? Is there something that all of this is leading up to? But it's kind of just more of like a exploration of Dana's childhood and like what their dynamic was like and how they had to hide the fact that James was her father. The writing. I don't, I don't dislike the writing, but I do feel like there are times when the writing doesn't transition very well. Tayari Jones kind of jumps around a lot in the narrative and it doesn't always transition very well. She's got a very, very thorough understanding of these characters and their personal histories and backstories, which I feel like she wants to share with the reader. However, sometimes it just kind of seems like interjected randomly in the narrative and like there will be a whole paragraph just parenthesized because she just wants to elaborate on a certain character or what became of that character and it doesn't always like fit in the flow of the story and I just feel like perhaps it could be um could it be tied in a little bit better I'm not the biggest fan of the writing but it's not bad is what I'm saying so I'm very invested in the characters very interested to see where it goes I'm very curious to read from Charisse's point of view because she seems like a little bit more privileged and I'm just wondering if um because we've only seen her through Dana's eyes and Dana has had like very limited interactions with Charisse if any in the first part I'm not trying to spoil anything for you but um so it'll be interesting if perhaps Dana has totally misjudged Sharice Sharice I'm currently on page 164 as I mentioned so this is the first part Dana's point of view and this is Sharice's point of view and I don't think there's a third part I think it's just the two parts anyway I'm probably gonna read more in this book today just because I feel like reading today and ignoring the other things that I have to do so we'll see how far I get and see you in the next update It's like 12.30 p.m. and I am home alone, which never happens. Brian is out helping his uncle move. I have no idea how long he will be gone for the day, but we are normally always home together all day long, every day of the week. So it's kind of fun to be alone. Um, not that I'm doing anything different, but I'm just being a lot louder. I'm just doing a lot of singing to myself. I just checked my email like five minutes ago and I read the rejection letter I got from the job I was interviewing for which 
was kind of unexpected. Like, I felt like the interview went well, but it's just annoying because I went through so many obstacles to get to this final interview and then to have all those efforts kind of for naught. I had to create an account, apply for the job, um, do an assessment, do a first interview, and do a second interview, and it was just a lot, and to be rejected, it kind of sucks. I was rejected from another job just like a couple weeks ago too, so <laughs> oh, I'm just feeling, feeling kind of rejected, but it's not a bad thing. I actually kind of felt relieved when I read the decision. Um, I did want the job and it was going to be a good deal overall, but definitely not something I'm passionate about or would want to work at long term. But back to the drawing board, I still have my grad school application. Hopefully third time's a charm as far as applying for things goes, even though grad school's not a job per se, it will be like the third thing that I apply to this year. I wonder if Brian got the job. I kind of feel like he did just because he has had like a little bit more experience than I have because he's like a little bit older than me and because he was the general manager at the restaurant we worked at. But again, I also kind of feel relieved so it just wasn't right for me. Rejection just means that's one possibility that I know for sure isn't the right path for me. There's so many things in life that I can do, at least I tried. I've been reading a lot in this book. I'm on page 242, so a little bit more than halfway. I am really liking this. I still don't know about the writing, so I just dropped my bookmark. Um, so I had this issue in an American marriage as well. I have no idea what my hair looks like. I like washed it this morning. I'm like. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. I need to buy mousse. I need to buy a hairdryer. I, I don't know what's happening. For your information, as a viewer, I have no viewfinder to look in when I'm recording. Like, my camera screen when I'm recording doesn't flip out. I can only look at the lens, so I have no idea what is in the frame, what I look like at any time during my recording. I had this issue in An American Marriage. Tiari Jones wrote, there were three main characters in that book, and she wrote different sections from their point of views in first person. All their voices sounded the exact same to me and so were there, there were times when I'd be reading one person's section and I would have to like remind myself whose section I was in because their narration all sounded the same. And it was like good narration but it just like didn't make sense for them all to narrate their own stories in the exact same tone and it was kind of like why didn't she just write it in third person like i understand the intended effect of writing in first person and i understand like how it can feel more personal it can kind of hit a little bit closer to the heart or whatever but i'm kind of experiencing the same thing in this book as well is that the narration from both dana's and sharice's point of view sounds the same tonally and just um, it's very descriptive, like the narrators will be describing things that happened to their mothers when their mothers were younger or their father when their father was younger and it's just very detailed and you know they'll say oh my mother told me this about growing up later on in life but it's just so detailed and descriptive it's like for them not being alive for that they're sure able to include so many details and like i don't know maybe that's me being nitpicky but at that rate i'm like just write it in third person point of view reading from a third person point of view for me never detracts from the emotional power of the moment i feel like as a writer she's just like not interested in writing in third person for some reason when i think that her writing or her books would be stronger if it was it's just a small thing. That being said though, I am so interested in this book though. Like I last night was like so tired and I still picked it up to read another chapter before bed because I was like, I just am very interested in the characters. So I'm getting a lot more of the 80s references with Charisse's section. Um, she keeps mentioning like Atta bead necklaces. I don't know what those look like, but I imagine if you were alive in the 80s, maybe you know what an Atta bead necklace is. I really am enjoying the story, so 
I kind of think I might finish it today, but maybe I'll finish it tomorrow. Regardless, I will probably check in again later today because I'm expecting some books in the mail. I've been waiting like a week and a half for these books to show up, so I will probably jump on camera later to share them with you. Hello, hello, hello. It's 3 p.m. and I got my books in the mail. I'm a happy person. So the first thing I got was Freshwater by Akweke Emezi. So, so, so excited to read this. I loved the death of Vivek OG. And I think that this one's going to be a little bit weirder and like I'm very excited for that. So, so, so stoked. Uh, Akweke is coming out with a memoir later this year, I think in June. I forget the name, it's like Dear Sen something. I will, I will make sure to link it, but I'm very excited for their memoir this year. Um, so I wanted to read this so that I was all prepared to read that memoir later. And um, I'm probably going to pre-order it even though it's only offered in hardback at its release, which is like $27, but um, I really like a Quake. So I also got Actor Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. I'm so excited to read this. So I've listened to the audiobook for Chloe Brown and Danny Brown. I don't own the other books, so this is the first book I've owned by Talia Hibbert, and I have a feeling that this might be her best work yet. I don't know. Everybody is raving about it. I feel like Talia Hibbert just gets better and better with every romance she writes, so I am so excited to read this book um, and to own it. It's so cute. It's such a lovely little paperback. And then the third book I got is The Collected Poems of Audre Lorde, which I am also super super stoked about because I read Sister Outsider last month, got me really interested in reading her poetry, you know, after looking up that interview of hearing her speak, and so I wanted to delve into her poetry. And so this contains more than 300 poems, and it supposedly represents her complete works. So it has everything she ever published poem-wise. So I am so excited to read this too. I really want to read more poetry this year, so I thought this would be a great place to start just because I knew I liked her as a person, I liked her philosophies, I loved her essays and speeches. I'm thinking I'm really gonna dig her poetry. So I don't know how I'm gonna read this, if I'm just gonna read like sections of it at a time or if I'm just gonna like dive deep into it all at once. I don't know, but these books probably will be on my April TBR. I'm not gonna cut in front of the other books on my TBR, but next month for sure, I'm feeling it. Very excited for them. Um, I'm also a little bit farther in Silver Sparrow. I think I have like 60 pages left and oh my gosh, things... Shit hath hit the fan. And I do not know how James can keep two families without slipping up or like giving himself away. Like how do you have two families and two daughters and not, like, okay, so like the one family knows straight up that he's got another family. But like, to juggle two wives and two daughters and not give that away to the one family, like, I could never do that. Like, that is just, like, to not accidentally call Sharice Dana, that would be, that'd be so hard. And like, ugh, it's just like, I feel bad for everybody. I feel so bad for Dana. I also feel bad for Cherise because I do like her too. She's not the snotty rich girl that I thought she was going to be. Like, their situation's a lot different. And, like, I feel bad for the first wife, Laverne, but I also feel so bad for Gwendolyn, the second wife. And it's just like, you can't keep that kind of secret from your wife. Like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna be a bigamist, people gotta know what's going on. So, yeah, just, ugh, I hope, every, I just want the girls to be happy. Like, I just, I, I do like Laverne, but I like Gwendolyn. I just like all the characters and I just want them to be happy and like work things out. But it's just such a tricky, frustrating, emotional situation. Um, so I'm really into the book now and <laughs> the drama. Oh my God. But I just want them to be happy.
is Sunday, March 21st. It is about 4 p.m. and I finished Silver Sparrow yesterday afternoon. I didn't want to update you with my thoughts quite yet because I wanted some time to sit with the book and the ending and develop my thoughts and opinions, but I am now ready to discuss this with you. So overall, I really enjoyed this book. I was incredibly invested in the characters, very interested in their lives. I do feel like the second half of the book had more action, so it was a little bit more gripping because everything kind of came to fruition in the second half. Plus, we know Dana's point of view, so we know what Charisse doesn't know in the second half, which makes it interesting. At the same time, we're learning things about Charisse that we previously didn't know. So it's just a uh, you're getting the full picture finally in the second chapter, so or in the second section. But yesterday I mentioned that the characters narrate in first person, yet they have a very omniscient understanding of their parents' lives. And when I finished the book, I read the author interview in the back, and Tiari Jones kind of touches on that. Um, the interviewer asks her a question um, about that specifically, and Tiari essentially says, I think we all tell stories about things we could not have possibly witnessed. When stories are handed down, we feel that we have the authority to tell them. We take what we were told and let our imaginations fill in the details. I have to joke that our parents' courtship story is our first encounter with propaganda. I know that I, for one, can recite the fairy tale of how my parents met if, as if I had been right there hiding in my mother's A-frame purse. So I get what she's saying. Uh, does it work or not? I feel like... I feel like I'm willing to kind of give a pass for that and the fact that the girls know so much about their parents' lives, like, whatever, you know, <laughs> that's fine, I'll accept that, but I do think that the writing is still good, not my favorite, but not bad. Um, so overall, I really liked this. I feel like it rides somewhere between a three and a four star book for me because at the end, I feel like there was a lot left unsaid among the characters. There were so many things that I wanted the characters to say to each other that they didn't really end up ever verbalizing to one another and it was just like slightly unsatisfying and there was like one thing that I just didn't get so it felt unresolved. Maybe it was resolved but I just didn't see how it like I didn't understand it or something. The ending was fine and good and inevitable in many cases, but I do think that there was just a little bit of more closure that I would have liked to read about. So overall, I'm really happy I read this. I definitely recommend this book if you like adult fiction, if you like uh, historical fiction. I know the 80s are considered historical fiction, that's so scary. Uh, do not tell me when the 90s become historical fiction. And do not tell me if that is already the case because I'm not ready for that. <laughs> so um, yeah, I definitely recommend this book. Very interesting. Let me know if you have any questions about this book. Let me know if you've read it and I would love for you to message me and let me know your thoughts on it as well. Maybe we can discuss the ending together. I've already edited most of this vlog and it is quite a lengthy vlog. I apologize if that is kind of cumbersome to you. I don't know, maybe you like to put my vlogs on and like do something in the background or just kind of have it on as um, company. But however, however you watch my vlogs, um, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye. See ya.